This week on ANN, Adventist Health and ADRA partnered to send medical supplies to Africa amid the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Creation Sabbath is October 23, and a new movie, Creation Detectives, has been released just in time. And ADRA seeks to minimize COVID-19 risk among migrants in Thailand. These stories and more coming up. Thank you so much for joining us this week. First in the news, six shipping containers filled with medical supplies from Adventist Health are on their way to Africa to assist with COVID-19 emergency responses in Ghana, Malawi, Namibia, Uganda, Zambia, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. This $3 million project is a result of a partnership between California-based Adventist Health and the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, or ADRA, the international humanitarian branch of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Each sh shipping container is filled with general medical supplies, personal protective equipment, medication, operating room supplies, and mobile medical testing equipment for COVID-19 and other diseases. Both large and small health facilities in various regions of Africa have been overwhelmed with demand for health care due to COVID-19 infections. Scarcity of vaccines in Africa and challenges with treatment are undermining effective response to the third wave of the pandemic. Since the COVID-19 pandemic began, ADRA has partnered with local authorities and agencies around the world to ramp up emergency responses to the nearly 20 million people in 96 countries impacted by the coronavirus. In Africa alone, where reportedly more than 5.7 million cases of virus are affecting several nations, ADRA aims to minimize the threat of COVID-19 by providing prevention training, engaging with the community, and supplying healthcare workers with personal protective equipment, hygiene kits, and more. This shipment is just one of several projects on which Adventist Health and ADRA are partnering around the world and the second round of supplies sent to Africa as a result of the partnership. A third shipment is scheduled for February 2022. ADRA International sent this report. This is the second shipment of medical supplies that we're sending to Africa because the continent is still dealing with COVID, even, uh, what, 18 months since the first pandemic you know, became global. So we felt that it is our duty to continue supporting the Adventist health and uh, hospitals and medical clinics in Africa, plus any government um, institutions. This is more than $3 million worth of medical supplies and PPEs going to our African offices, our Adventist institutions, the community at large, but mostly also to the frontline workers, those working in healthcare and fighting COVID with vaccination programs and whatnot. And as you see here, we have um, 10 pallets that we're airlifting for Ghana, for our health uh, institutions, Adventist health institutions in Ghana. And we're sending um, N95 masks for our frontline workers there and surgical gowns. We work with partners um, around the world and some of them here in the United States, including our Adventist healthcare system in the United States. We're grateful to Adventist Health in California for reaching out to us and for working together. We have multiple operations with them, uh, the ones going to Africa, the, you know, several countries, the uh, containers we have mobilized together. So they mobilized resources and we had our resources. We consolidated those PPEs and medical supplies to do so much more together. And we are grateful for the donations they made we have delivered more than two truckloads of PPEs, of masks, N95s, gowns, uh, face shields, and hopefully these added along with the additional surgical supplies for the OR, labor and delivery supplies, and general clinical supplies will make a huge impact for the communities we're serving. We'd love to thank ADRA for their tremendous support in partnering with us to 
actually get all these supplies across the world and into, into the communities in Africa that have great needs. When we link the hospital system in, in the U.S. with ADRA, with the hospital system in Africa, together there's a bigger impact for the communities, the most vulnerable communities in Africa. This coming Sabbath, October 23, Adventists all over the world will celebrate Creation Sabbath. And just in time for Creation Sabbath 2021, Creation Detectives, the movie is now available. Creation Detectives is the brainchild of Manolo Quintanilla and Naomi Duran, director of the Geoscience Research Institute European branch office. Quintanilla says, we noticed that children love comic book superheroes and started a ministry dressing up as superheroes to visit sick children in hospitals. How better to lead children to the ultimate and real superhero, Jesus Christ? Creation Detectives is another way in which we want to harness children's natural interest and comics teach them about science, the creation, and the creator. Creation Sabbath is for everyone, especially children who need to learn about their creator and redeemer. Other Creation Sabbath resources for children can be found at the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventist Children's Ministries webpage. This annual celebration is scheduled in the Seventh-day Adventist Church's calendar of special days. It is designated as the fourth Sabbath of every October and open to all people who wish to worship the Creator God of the Bible. More information can be found at creationsabbath.net. Advent Health's West Florida Division has opened the new state-of-the-art Tunisia Center for Surgery at its flagship hospital, Advent Health Tampa. The center will serve the community by providing complex surgeries using the most advanced equipment. Take a look at the newly designed tower with this special report from Advent Health. It is my honor today to be able to present to you our flagship hospital, Advent Health Tampa, which will become the beacon for the next level of complex care. This is the newest destination for complex surgical care in Tampa Bay and the largest surgical expansion in the city's history. We have designed this surgical tower so that it's not only relevant for today, but that it will be relevant 30 years from now a hospital for the future right here, right now. This tower will house some of the most sought after surgeons performing some of the most complex medical procedures from advanced hepatobiliary surgery and colorectal surgery to advanced neurosurgery. We wanted to build ORs for the future and so when you get to see them, they are big. And they're big to accommodate robotics and other technologies that are gonna come down the pike that will need to perform a really advanced surgery. It's not often in one's career that you get a chance to be involved with something that changes the face of a community. This change is a new entrance, a new appearance, a new experience that our community and consumers will be welcomed at for years to come. Thailand experienced its first COVID-19 case on January 13, 2020, and was successful in containing the virus until December 2020. In January 2021, COVID-19 cases increased drastically, according to the local reports. Since September 29, the accumulated number of cases ballooned to 1.5 million, with more than 10,000 new cases per day. Thailand authorities aim to administer 63 million vaccine doses in three stages before the year ends. The local government has created three tiers of vaccine administration. The first doses go to those considered high risk with un underlying conditions, followed by frontline healthcare workers and laborers in the hospitality service sectors, then the general public. In Thailand, there are 2.3 million people who are reportedly migrants from Cambodia, the Lao People's Democratic Republic, Myanmar, and Vietnam. Most migrants are undocumented and live in remote areas far from public services with limited access to COVID-19 prevention and vaccine information. 
In January, the International Organization for Migration, or IOM, a leading intergovernmental organization in the field of migration in Thailand, conducted a rapid assessment among 316 migrants in Maid Sop district and found that migrants were getting less pay than average workers and work hours were reduced after the COVID-19 outbreak in Thailand. Country director for ADRA Thailand, Quentin Campbell said, ADRA is targeting seven migrant communities bordering Myanmar. ADRA Thailand is also working to provide aid to 5,000 migrant workers, including 1,000 school age students. To address increasing access to COVID-19 information among the migrant population, Campbell says ADRA will participate in coordination meetings with organized vaccine information campaigns in collaboration with local Adventist churches and authorities. Additionally, ADRA Thailand plans to arrange hygiene awareness promotions that will include information about physical distancing, frequent hand washing and mask wearing. More than 500 households are expected to receive hygiene items. ADRA Thailand will establish partnerships with local Adventist churches, public health sectors, and health facilities to engage community leaders who will play a crucial role as health awareness influencers. Learn more about ADRA's COVID-19 aid relief in Thailand at adrathailand.org. Coming up, Adventists in Tanzania hold a special evangelistic campaign. We'll be right back after the break. Any idea what time it is? We really, really need our sleep. Are you from? No, we're not from the future, but we know you only pay attention to yourselves, so here we are. But how? We have no time for that. We have less than 30 seconds. Fact number one, adults need seven hours of sound, restful sleep to keep their immune systems healthy and to fight viruses. And today, right now, is the single most important thing you can do to keep yourself healthy. What are you doing? We're just Googling if spicy foods cause hallucinations. A fact too, staring at your phone or your computer right before bed prevents sound sleep. And you'll be tired the next day. Ain't nobody got time for that. Can we just go to bed, please? They're evil in the world. Are Christians hypocrites? Is the Bible a fairy tale? Does Jesus love everyone? Church doesn't feel relevant to my life. Is God even real? You have questions? Let's talk about it. I believe Bible. Welcome back. The Adventist Church in Tanzania celebrated 40,000 new members who embraced the Advent hope through baptism after a three-week media evangelistic campaign. Themed Peace from Above, the event displayed the full package of the Adventist message which tackled physical, mental, and spiritual human needs. The main speaker, president of the North Tanzania Union Conference, Godwin Lekundayo, explained that by choosing God, people attain sustainable peace. He expounded on freedom to choose and invited the people to make God their right choice because he is the only source of true peace. He reminded them that whenever God forgives sin, peace sets in. The message was broadcast live from the main site in Nyamongo, a city in northern Tanzania, on the border with Kenya. The signal was relayed to more than 4,000 sites across the country, and the event was simultaneously interpreted from Swazili to five languages, English, French, Portuguese, Arabic, and Sign Language. The Adventist Church in the East Central Africa Division and Tanzania sent this report. The Adventist Church in Tanzania celebrated a new birth of over 40,000 members who embraced the Adventist hope through baptism after a three-week media evangelistic campaign. Themed Amani Itokayo Ju, a Kiswahili sentence meaning peace from above, the event displayed the full package of the Adventist message which tackled physical, mental, and spiritual human needs. 
The main speaker, Pastor Godwin Lekundayo, president of North Tanzania Union Conference, confidently recalled the amazing experience. I will never forget how a people were that much brave despite of the COVID-19, but they could still come and mingle among themselves just in order to receive the word of God. The theme itself was peace from above. The message was broadcast live from the main site in Nyamongo, a city in the north of Tanzania on the border with Kenya. The signal was relayed in more than 4,000 sites across the country and the event was simultaneously interpreted from Kiswahili into five languages, English, French, Portuguese, Arabic, and Sign Language. For Pastor Mark Malekana, South Tanzania Union President, it is time for the church to optimize media opportunities in its mission. Media is God's instrument, power of God's instrument to reach people. Many people have been reached in the prisons, in the, in the shops, in the bars, in the beds, in the hospitals, in homes, and in the churches. So we say, if we want to reach everybody, in our times, we must embrace media in our mission. I call you to embrace media in your ministry. Some sites were very peculiar. They included bars, restaurants, barbershops, and prisons. To reach them, Influential church members sought permission to install screens wherever they found crowds of people and made sure the signal was received. In one barb shop, a lady decided to be baptized after watching and digesting the good news about heavenly peace. The manager, who had not yet decided, revealed that the health message touched his heart and was ready to start eating healthy food and do physical exercise. In the city of Mwanza, 120 prisoners who were watching on the screen expressed their pressing need to have Bibles. The following day, a lady watching through social media outside Tanzania offered them more than their number. They continued watching and reading and eventually got baptized. In another village, nine family members invited their brother, who was a well-known witch, to watch the message. With the help of the local pastor, he decided to abandon witchcraft and join the church to depend on God, the Creator. The conversion of the man amazed the entire neighborhood so much so that they started attending the meetings. At his baptism, he decided to release a hyena that he had been using in his magic. In order to prevent the loss of the newly baptized members, Measures have been taken to nurture and integrate them into the new life. The communication and media departments have already designed a plan to work with personal ministerial secretariat to incorporate every local church member in discipleship through sharing of Bible studies and home-to-home -home visitation. At the closing ceremony, the government of Tanzania was represented by Honorable Ali Happy, the regional commissioner of Mara region, where the meetings were taking place. After receiving a report about free health services that were offered to his community, he commended the Adventist Church for their holistic approach to mission. Calling them reliable partners, he invited them to join the government in the COVID-19 vaccination campaign and requested prayers for his government. We are standing here celebrating the results of a three-week evangelistic campaign that has been going on. We are surrounded by many people watching and celebrating even as pastors continue to baptize. Behind me is a baptismal pool and people are getting baptized after they have carefully watched and listened to the message whose theme was peace from above. Reporting for Adventist News Network, I am Prince Bahati, Nyamongo, Tanzania. Coming up, David Trim is here for this week in Adventist history. But up next, Adventist Missions shares what your offerings are doing around the world. Hi, Bio. How are you? 
are you? Are you okay? Dear VL, I can't even remember how long we've been staying at home now because of this virus. For now, <laughs> it's just nice to hear your voice and see your face. Nothing beats playing outside in the dirt though. Which reminds me, are your hands clean? Mommy and Daddy says not a lot of kids get COVID-19, but it's always nice to be extra safe. We should wash our hands before picking our nose with the water. Washing our hands protects us, but it also keeps us from spreading the virus. In case we touch something dirty, let's always be clean and safe, okay? Love, Joey. We may look, pray, read, think, worship, sing, and share differently, but we all look forward to the Sabbath. And we all look forward to the future when Jesus will come again. With this message in mind, we arrived at a core component for a new identity system. The creation grid, a simple seven column structure for layout. The grid is a reference both to the prophetic timeline as well as to the creation week that culminated in the seventh day Sabbath. The first six columns of the grid belong to the designer. They can be filled with anything, text, images, illustrations, patterns, and logos. But the seventh column, the Sabbath column, does not belong to them. It is meant to be different and special. Regardless of what or where you are designing, you can always find information to help you communicate that we are all Seventh-day Adventists. Welcome back. What if you could change a life by giving something up for one week? Almost 100 years ago, Seventh-day Adventists did exactly that and the annual sacrifice offering for Adventist mission was born. The annual sacrifice offering helps global missions start new groups of believers among unreached people, often in the most challenging places in the world. Adventist Mission has more. If you could make a difference in someone's life by giving something up for one week, what would you give up? Some 100 years ago, in 1922, Seventh-day Adventists did exactly that. The money used to support missionaries was running out. When the church was nearly forced to call its missionaries home, Adventists stepped up. They accepted the challenge of the mission offering. They gave up something for mission. Children gave their piggy bank savings. Adults gave a week's wages. By giving something up, they kept the missionaries in the field. By giving something up, they kept the church's mission program on track. The annual sacrifice offering helps Global Missions start new groups of believers among unreached people, often in the most challenging places in the world. So challenging, in fact, that Global Mission identifies some of these places only as veiled cities or veiled countries. We do not publicly name these places. Today, there are still more than 7,000 unreached people groups with a total of more than 3 billion people. Jesus told the parable of the lost sheep. When one sheep was missing, the shepherd went out to search for it. We are told that when Jesus looked at the crowds, he looked at them with compassion because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Today, he still looks at the crowds with compassion. How about us? Can we look out with the same compassion? So what would you give up? That snack from the vending machine, that drink you love, a pizza, those new shoes, that new game, your favorite candy bar, that new toy, that slice of cake, hot chocolate or cold chocolate, those in-app purchases, that nearly irresistible deal of the day. Now, here's the challenge. Let's actually do it. Give up one thing for one week, challenge your friends and family, and give the money to the annual sacrifice offering. You can give online or in church. Simply mark your tithe envelope, annual sacrifice offering. Watch this and other mission stories online by visiting AdventistMission.org, then click on videos at the top. 
And finally, for today's episode, let's turn to David Trim for a look at Adventist history. This week, we hear about the 28th General Conference session that took place in 1889. Welcome to This Week in Adventist History. On October 18, 1889, the 28th General Conference session convened in Battle Creek, Michigan. The previous two sessions had been held away from Battle Creek, but now it returned to the venue of 22 of the first 25 sessions. Compared to the tumultuous and landmark 27th session in Minneapolis, the 1889 session is usually seen as being uneventful. All three officers were re-elected, Ola Olson as president, Dan Jones as secretary, and Harmon Lindsay as treasurer. But in addition, important decisions were taken. One was that henceforth sessions should be biennial instead of annual. Thus, the 29th session would not be held until 1890. Another decision of major consequence was taken in 1889 when the session voted to create the Foreign Mission Board. Ellen White's son, W.C. White, known as Willie, who you see here, was elected the board secretary. For the next 14 years, the mission board had responsibility for administering the church's foreign missionary enterprise. It initially had a positive impact and it grew in importance. It carried out its own fundraising and selected missionaries to serve in new and in some established mission fields. Eventually, though, it came to operate in distinction from the executive committee and at the 1903 general conference session, the executive committee became the church's mission board. On October 19, 1970, in the Philippines, Academia Nkanlurang Mindanao, or Western Mindanao Academy, moved from its original location to a new site. It still operates today and is still located on the edge of the town of Dumengag in Zamboanga del Sur province on the western part of Mindanao Island. We thank God for the vital ministry of our Adventist schools. That was this week in Adventist history. Thanks for watching, Anna. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Did you know the Adventist Church has a YouTube channel where you can watch ANN video, ANN in-depth, and plenty of other amazing videos on prophecy, health, and Bible study? Just go to YouTube and search for the Adventist Church. Click the subscribe button to make sure you're caught up each week. And remember, leave a comment or a prayer request. We have people who are praying for you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Before we say goodbye, here's some good news from the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verses 105 to 107. The passage says, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it, that I will follow your righteous law. I have suffered much. Preserve my life, Lord, according to your word. Amen. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit Adventist.news for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless. Take care.